Fence outside. They're in the gate. And they're off. Never have I ever is going straight to the front. Nero showing good speed too. Ultimate Bango comes through along the inside a joint third with four left right next to him. A gap of three back to fight on who's racing in between horses. Down at the rail, Southern Horse is trying to move into contention. Has about five lengths to make up. And Encoder is just outside of that pair. It's a pretty compact group into the far turn. It's never have I ever and narrow pressing. Three lengths back to four left in third. Encoder steady progress now fourth. Ultimate Bango at the rail in fifth, followed by Fight On, and then Southern Horse has seven to make up. They're a quarter of a mile from home, and Nero on the outside on even terms with Never Have I Ever. Four left, one from the outside, and Encoder a threatening presence down on the inside. Southern Horse looking to get through traffic, and Ultimate Bango has surfaced too. Ultimate Bango with a nice move to the lead. On the outside, Encoder is chasing, followed by Never Have I Ever. Southern Horse late. It's Ultimate Bango, nicely ridden by Flabby and Pratt to get the money. Southern Horse finished well second. Encoder was third, followed by Never Have I Ever and four left. Point six six seconds. Cento to the outside. And they're off. Vetoed break sharply, deservedly comes through to challenge. Mongolian Ford outside of them. Then Bravestone in fourth, followed by Settecento and Mongolian Kingdom, hugs the rail and is last. Deservedly will take him to the six furlong pole, leading three quarters of a length. Vetoed second by two. Then Mongolian Ford in third, followed by Bravestone at the rail, about four lengths off the lead. It's two more to Settecento and Mongolian Kingdom. About seven lengths covers the field as they head to the 5 8 pole. It's deservedly and vetoed on even terms. A length and a half, Mongolian Ford goes to keep them honest in third. Then Bravestone holding his own in fourth, three lengths off the pace. A length and a half back to Settecento, who's four clear of Mongolian Kingdom. They're heading into the far turn, and it's deservedly who's been prominent throughout. Vetoed coming under a ride in between horses, and Mongolian Ford makes his move, now takes second on the outside. Bravestone is next. Settecento, only three lengths off the lead, as Mongolian Ford has taken the lead, coming to the quarter pole, opens up three quarters, Settecento on the move to challenge in second. They're followed by Bravestone, between rivals, down at the rail, deservedly vetoed the distant trailer, Mongolian Kingdom. His half-brother, Mongolian Ford, has a two-length lead with a furlong left to go. Bravestone chasing gamely and trying to run him down now. 16th pole, Mongolian Ford, Bravestone. Bravestone, Mongolian Ford are coming for the wire together. Mongolian Ford, Mongolian Ford fought off Bravestone. Set to Cento third, vetoed a distant fourth. Pulpit rider. All set. And they're off smooth start. Tony Ann is going straight to the front. Sassy Serb has some early foot. Hogan's Holiday is on the far outside. Pulpit rider is just inside of her. At the rail, beautiful gift is not far away. Only two lengths off the lead and Carpe Venum at the back of a very compact group. By the stands, Tony Ann, a half length in front, Sassy Serb second, and then it's Pulpit Rider three wide in third. Beautiful gift on the inside fourth, followed by Hogan's Holiday together with Carpe Venum. It's Tony Ann in control early, has it by a length over Sassy Serb in second. Then Pulpit Rider continuing a three-deep journey, and Beautiful Gift hugs the rail in fourth. 
Hogan's Holiday is three lengths off the lead, a length and a half to Carpe Venum. They're heading toward the half mile pole, and it's the favorite, Tony Ann, controlling the pace. About a half length in front of Sassy Serb, trying to keep up second. Pulpit Rider now a length and a half off them in third. Beautiful Gift gets a little tap on the inside fourth. Then it's Hogan's Holiday fifth, three and a half off the lead, and Carpe Venum at the back. Tony Ann trying to sneak away and does it right now. There goes Tony Ann. And Tony Ann spurts away from them coming to the quarter pole. Good looking strides, has it by three suddenly. Sassy Serb is in second. Hogan's Holiday rallying on the far outside. They turn for home and Tony Ann's in command by three. Chased still by Sassy Serb in second. Far outside, Hogan's Holiday is starting to make some very serious progress. 16th pole, Tony Ann. Hogan's Holiday bearing down in the center. Tony Ann holding on. Tony Ann, Hogan's Holiday. Tony Ann in front running fashion. Hogan's Holiday big in defeat. Carpe Venum in a battle with Pulpit Rider for the show dough. And then Sassy Serb. Running time, 147.9. act to the outside. They're in the gate. And they're off. Armagnac is out very quickly. Paroli comes through on the inside. Then it's Corsica Flavor. South Street between those two. And Kerouac is at the back of the field through the opening furlong. And the lead belongs to Armagnac, racing off the rail and inviting opening for Paroli to come through. And these two have sped away. Armagnac maintains the lead, though, and opens it up to a length. Juan Hernandez concedes on Paroli and is now two off the pace in second, angling to the outside. It's a gap of five to the next flight. Kerouac moves through willingly to take third. Then South Street fourth, seven lengths off the pace and a length back to Corsica Flavor. They have four and a half furlongs to go and Armagnac to catch. Leads it by about three. Paroli second by two. Kerouac now clearly third, inching forward. Another two and a half back to South Street and Corsica flavor at the back. Field heads toward the three eighth pole and they're taking closer order. Armagnac's lead is three quarters of a length to Paroli in second. Then Kerouac third. South Street pushed along fourth, four and a half off the pace. And then it's two more to Corsica Flavor. And Armagnac lets it out a notch with a quarter of a mile to go. Leads a length and a half to Paroli. They've left the others well behind. South Street, Kerouac turning for home. And it's Armagnac a length and a half. Paroli not giving up, trying hard in second. Six back to South Street in third, 16th pole. And it's Armagnac still by two. Paroli very game in second. The others well behind, headed by South Street. Armagnac takes care of business in front running fashion by two. Paroli second, about eight more back to South Street third in front of Kerouac. And they're off. Keep your coil broke outward, but did break very alertly. Pistachio Princess has speed too, and they're joined by St. Helena on the far outside. Ready at midnight is next. Cheerful Charm, Whistler Style, Badger Kitten is down at the rail, and Zara, who was bothered slightly at the start, is at the back of the field. Around the first turn, it's Keep Your Coil, showing the way. Leads it by a half length. St. Helena presses a bit in second. Down at the rail, Pistachio Princess, ready at midnight with the yellow cap, and Cheerful Charm is a close-up fifth, three lengths off the lead. Then Zara and Badger Kitten right together, a length in front of Whistler style. Five lengths covers them, onto the back stretch they go. St. Helena on the outside of Keep Your Coil, who maintains a slender lead. 
Ready at midnight is three wide in third. Cheerful charm between rivals. And down at the rail, Pistachio Princess fifth, but no more than two lengths off the lead. Zara is making some progress. White cap on the outside. Another length back to Badger Kitten, who will need some racing room, has some run at this stage. And three quarters back to Whistler's style. A quarter of a mile to go. Halim has a narrow lead. Cheerful Charm running a good one on the outside. Down at the rail. Keep your coil is in third. And now Badger Kitten gets out with some breathing room. Pistachio Princess dives down toward the rail. But it's Badger Kitten with a sweeping move. Handwritten. Blows by the competition late. And it will be Badger Kitten striding out to win comfortably. Photo for second will go to Whistler Style who rallied nicely. Then it was St. Helena just in front of Cheerful Charm and Pistachio Princess. Running time, 1 minute 36.51 seconds.
I know, I know. Technology has changed the world, right? The way we live, companies like Amazon and Netflix and Uber, they've all made life really, really easy for us, right? But you know what? There's nothing like coming to the racetrack, particularly Sanita, if you're watching on your couch from Buffalo or Detroit or Chicago or even up, up the road in Santa Barbara. Why don't you come to Sanita? You're looking at two guys who can actually help you out quite a bit. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Quigley, VIP Player Concierge. Also, your seminar host for the next 40 minutes. And Mr. Chappie, Jeff Chapman, is my seminar guest today. Chappie, welcome to the seminar. Thank you, sir. And if you are in Buffalo or Detroit, I feel sorry for you because we've been complaining about the wind because it's a, you know, 68 degrees and we're we're cold and it's probably nine below there so and we can make fun of people living back there because you grew up in south bend indiana i grew up in chicago we know what it's like that's why we want you to come to the great race place we are the vip player concierge as i mentioned in the opening jeff is the vip player host and we have so many amenities that we can offer you no matter what level of player you are if you're two dollar better of course, we'll treat you with box seats or complimentary admission. If you're a much bigger player, we can do a lot more for you. I'm in charge of the Eddie Logan suite, which is a private suite on the clubhouse turn. Jeff is in charge of the 12 suites that basically are underneath Front Runner Restaurant that line the stretch from the eighth pole to the finish line. Let's face it, that's why we work here, right, Jeff? It's a great place, but also we can offer a lot of amenities to different players based upon their level of play. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, I think that's something that you and I love to do. We recognize the players. We're players ourselves. And uh, you've kind of got the Eddie Logan covered, and I've kind of got the rest of the area. We work very well together, and we love to take care of any of the players, big or small, and make your experience great here. And what better place than Santa Anita? And there's so many things we can do for you both before the races and after the races as well. Of course, Clockers Corner in the morning is a place where you can rub shoulders with all the Hall of Fame trainers and jockeys and watch the horses work. And then even after the races, who knows if the Lakers or the Kings are in town or even UCLA Bruins basketball team, Jeff or I might join you to go to a game as well. So again, Give us a call. You can see our Twitter handles on the bottom here of the simulcast feed. Also, you can call the switchboard. 626 is the area code 574-RACE-626. -E 574-RACE. Ask for Jeff uh, Chapman's extension. Definitely give him a call no matter where you're watching from, and we will definitely take care of you. Jeff, but what about the results yesterday? Kind of was a chalky day because, you know, the field sizes were small. We're faced with the same scenario today. Are field sizes important to you whenever you look at the card? Very much so. Um, you know, Cow Cup weekend, it was terrific. We had big fields. Tremendous. And it just makes for better betting opportunities. And I think yourself, myself included, most horse players, we try to look for value. Um, I'm a big pick five player. So I like to have those races where I can spread and maybe or, 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 or single a horse that nobody else has. You know, I try to zig when somebody else zags. Today, like today, is it's a little bit tougher I you know, especially when I'm sitting here up with you, I don't like to give a bunch of favorites, but I'm also trying to give out who I think is going to win the race. So sure. trying to create value. I like to watch a lot of replays. It makes it a little bit challenging on days like today, but uh, we're going to do our best. It's interesting. You know, sometimes it's a roller coaster ride at the racetrack in terms of field sizes. Keep in mind next week on our sister track, Gulfstream Park has the Pegasus World Cup on Saturday. And likewise, we have a multitude of stake races both next Saturday and Sunday. So I expect the field sizes next weekend to be much better. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that's going to be the case. Jeff, you mentioned race replays. And of course, a lot of us watch race replays. When you're watching replays as part of your handicapping arsenal, what are some of the things you're looking for? Of course, there's obvious trouble and then there's subtle trouble. What are some of the things you you're looking for when you watch replays yeah i mean i watch replays over and over again because obviously you you want to look at uh the pace of the race uh whether the rails were out that day um and then a lot of times you know everybody's going to find that the horse gets steadied five different times but you got to look for like you said subtle little things that somebody else might miss you know a, a horse gets cut off early or a front runner doesn't get the lead and, and, and it's rank something like that where you know at this day and age with the workout reports and everybody else getting to watch video it gets harder and harder to find that horse that you might get six eight to one that nobody else is looking at but it takes a lot of work i i give credit to to those like you know trip no pros 
those guys who do that every day, all day long, I don't know how they do it, but uh, kudos to them. It's a labor of love, that's for sure. What about betting, Jeff? You talked about how you like playing pick fives. I assume that's your most favorite wager. But when it comes time to step up to the window and make an old-fashioned win bet, is there a certain odds cutoff where even though you might love a horse, you might back off, say, at odds of seven to five or whatever your criteria is? Yeah, I. Tr- you know what? I tried to, I heard Gino talking last week and he kind of makes his own morning line. I just have something in my head that, uh, it's like a fair value. Yeah. A fair value type of bet. What I've got away from, because I'm strictly a pick five player for the most part, you know, I'm a gambler. I go for the home runs, uh, which is not the smartest thing to do in the entire world. So this meet, especially I've tried to make it a point, um, I've had last year, especially I had so many times where I would single a five, six, eight, 10 to one shot in a pick five, the horse would win and I would lose the pick five and have nothing to show for it. You'd miss a favorite in another leg or something stupid like that Not all the time. It's ridiculous. I mean, so this year I've decided I, I had a, um, a pick five, maybe three weeks ago. And I singled a 15 to one and it won the first leg and put in a pretty good size ticket. Of course it went chalk, 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 chalk the rest of the way. I remember I did actually bet for, you know, I, I, I said to myself, you have to make those win bets to, to make some money on the day. That price. I finally did that. And that has been, I guess that was my new year's resolution to actually bet the horses I single. So it's not only, only just the price, but, um, make the old fashioned win bet because sometimes I, you find yourself in that five sequence race. There's a couple races. You don't have a strong opinion. So you, the, the strong opinion, you got to back up and make, make it old fashioned win bet. Very uh, valuable advice, Jeff, you know, in our role as VIP player concierge and VIP player host, we intermingle with a lot of trainers and owners and different people who are involved in the game. You know, a lot of people watching us might think, wow, those guys are lucky. They got they get a lot of inside information. But you know what? A lot of times the inside information is no good. They like their horse, but that doesn't mean that the, that, that horse is going to win the race because other trainers and owners like their horse in that race even better. So inside information is sometimes a good thing, but a lot of times a bad thing. Yeah, I'll tell you, I learned that the, the, the hard way because when I first moved out here, every tip I got I thought was the, you know, the golden trip to making easy money. And every, but, but like you said, most trainers like their horse, every owner likes their horse. And as much as those trainers are around those horses every day, they're wrong a lot of the time. And also it also comes down to a bad trip. Uh, a horse misses the break. There are, that's why we call it gambling. You say that to me, tough game boss. That's why we call it gambling. As I complained to him at the end of the day in the Eddie Logan suite, but th- there's just so many variables that make it tough to win day in and day out. And as much as people think we get this infi- inside information more times than not, it's, it's incorrect. It's never tough to win whenever we have Jeff Jeff Chapman as our seminar guest. We're going to find out who Jeff likes on today's nine race card. But before we do any of that, let's toss the microphone over to track announcer Frank Miramati and get the early scratches on today's Saturday's program. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park, the great race place. Here are the early changes. In the first race, start of the 50 cent early pick five, just a blinker note. Race two is the start of the early pick four. There are no changes in the second. In the third, we have that program scratch of number two. Note, as listed in your program, this is a no-show wagering event. The fourth kicks off the rainbow pick six, that jackpot pool for a single ticket winner. Starts with a pool of $121,000. In the fifth, start of the late pick five, scratch number one, red panty night. 
Sixth race is the beginning of the late pick four, and there are no changes. In the seventh, the clocker's corner stakes, no changes. The eighth race starts the golden hour pick four with no changes. And in the ninth race, started the $5 golden hour double, no changes. Enjoy your day at Santa Anita Park. Post time for our first race is in 58 minutes at 1230. At this time, we go back to Quigley's Corner. His special guest today, Jeff Chappie Chapman. Welcome back. We're talking horses with Jeff Chapman. He's the VIP player host here at the Great Race Place. He's somebody you should get in touch with if you're a player. No matter what your size of play is, he can accommodate you whenever you visit us here at the Great Race Place. It would be our pleasure to get to know you and also to take good care of you. Jeff, before we take a look at today's nine race card, of course, you mentioned the winds from last night. They were howling here in Arcadia, California, over 45 mile an hour sustained winds. There was a lot of tree damage as well as some power outages, but thankfully that wind has subsided. It's more of a breeze right now. I'd guess maybe in the 10 to 15 mile an hour category. And of course, it's supposed to continue to subside as the day goes on. And that just means we have perfect racing conditions, fast track and a, a firm turf course. So let's kick it off here, Jeff, in race number one, beginning with the 50 cent early pick five. And we start going six furlongs in the turf course. The rails today are 10 feet for maiden special weights, four year olds and up, a field of seven. The morning line favorite in the current betting choice at nine to five is number three, Cali Bay. Before we get your selections on the race, you wanted to show a workout from Cali Bay back on January. January 3rd right here at San Diego. Let's show that replay and tell us why you wanted to showcase this work. Yeah, um, you know, I thought Cali Bay was the horse to beat anyways. And, you know, the horse has been kind of knocking on the door a couple seconds from two turf starts uh, uh, here at Santa Anita. And I thought this is a very interesting work. This horse is actually, actually working heads up on the training track with Phil D'Amato does quite a bit, especially with his turf runners, with a horse named Legs Galore, who you re remember won the Sunshine Philly and Mayor Turf last week. Off and, the long layoff. Correct, off the long layoff coming down the hill. And uh, th th they worked heads heads up, and I thought Cali Bay put in a very strong work, had not ran since last November. So I think that uh, shows all signs Point to that the uh, Cali Bay is ready to roll off the bench today, and that becomes my top pick in race one. Not only is it it's your uh, top pick, Jeff, but is it a potential single in the early pick five as well? Yeah, I think I'll probably single here. You know, some a couple other horses caught my interest. Um, I'm not the best at it, but the one thing you got going for you is going down to the paddock and taking a look at the horses beforehand, especially some first time starters. Um, my second choice, which happens to be the seven hounds tooth. I watch a lot of the replays on XB TV and I kind of gone back and forth between the five and the seven air force red and a couple reasons. I, I took the seven, one thing, Richard Mandela trains this horse. Mandela, obviously, this is a five hundred thousand uh, dollar Uncle Mo horse. Could be anything. Big long stride, big horse. Looks like it has a lot of talent. Might want to go long. 
this horse wouldn't surprise me winning this race. The, the two things on the XBTV uh, workouts that I noticed, the horse broke slowly twice. So I thought maybe that would be to a disadvantage here. Uh, maybe this horse is so big that has a little bit of gait problems. Uh, Air Force Red is another one I, I kind of want to take a peek at. You know, Leonard Powell isn't known to win first time out, but we got the old French connection there. And it's always interesting to note when a, a guy like Flavian Pratt comes aboard for a first time starter for maybe a little bit lower profile of a barn. And this horse did work well in the morning. So I'm leaning towards singling Cali Bay, and, you know, unless the five or the seven shows something to me. Like I said, I'm not the expert. I'll be checking out the Quigley tweets when they come out. And uh, I have a couple trainers that I know exactly where they stand before race one. And I'll kind of get their opinion on how the first timers look in race one. Three and seven in race number one. A couple of additional notes above and beyond what Jeff mentioned. First of all, number seven, Houndstooth. You can see it's ridden by Johnny V over the last year or so. Richard Mandela and Johnny V have not teamed up. Now, of course, Johnny V new to Southern California, but it's interesting that this is his first mount for the Mandela barn. Also, this is a five-year-old son making his debut, as Jeff mentioned, a son of Uncle Mo. So that's interesting that it took him this long to get to the races. Also, the only runner in the field that does not use Lasix, even though he's eligible to do so. Also, number five, Air Force Red. Jeff uh, mentioned the French connection of Leonard Powell and Flavian Pratt. Take a look at their statistics together. They hit at a 27% win clip. Certainly Air Force Red seems to be live, and it's basically cut in half right now. Six to one morning line, seven to two on the tote board. Let's turn the page, Jeff, and take a look at race number two. Begins the 50 cent early pick four. This time we're on the main track, one mile the distance for start uh, for starter optional claiming types. Phillies and mares, a field of five. The morning line favorite on the outside, number five, Dream Princess. Nine to five on John White's morning line. Give us your thoughts on race two. Yeah, small field, and um, you know probably the horse to beat is uh, the five Dream Prin Princess at nine to five. I'm going to try to beat that horse with something I rarely will ever do, and that is pick a one for twenty three horse on top, <laughs> and that would be the two horse Smooth Like Butter. A um, couple things about this horse: this horse has been running against some talented horses. Uh, in the 23 career starts has hit the board in 11 of the 23 starts big move here to John Velasquez. And I do think naughty Evelyn will probably clear this field, but on the stretch out, I think Johnny V the one thing we've noticed out here since Johnny V has came and especially with Pratt, they always have their horses in the right spot. And I think Johnny V will sit just off that pace and probably get first run don't love those one for 23s, but I think against a little bit e easier of a group here, smooth like butter might get the uh, the job done. You know, I'm hoping in the two to one range. Smooth like butter, as you can see, and as Jeff mentioned, is one for 23 lifetime. But one of those wins came at this, at the only win of his career came at this distance in only five lifetime tries. And it also came right here over the main track at Santa Anita. So back in six days, switching over to Johnny V, as Jeff mentioned, certainly positive indications there. Number five, Dream Princess, First off, the claim for $100,000 from the for the, from the Ronis Racing Stable, taken off Brad Cox, hasn't been seen since April 25th at Oakland Park. First start here in Southern California. And that race that uh, she exits has proven to be live. There's been three next out winners, including the second place finner, who you can see was italicized, came back to earn a buyer speed figure of 77, basically validating that 70 buyer speed figure that Dream Princess earned. We'll see if Smooth Like Butter can run down Dream Princess, but it could be a competitive race, even though it's only a five horse field race number three unfortunately is only a four horse field this time back on the turf course this time once again spreading six furlongs on the flat turf course starter option starter optional claiming types fillies and mares morning line favorite on the outside once again number five translate taking the blinkers off comes in from saratoga but has three starts here at santa anita previous to that one win one second and one third four to five on the morning line take the short price or look elsewhere well i gotta take the short price here I, you know it looks like the three inside runners all have some early gas uh, like you said, this horse has hit the board in all three starts at Santa Anita. Takes the blinkers off. Rispoli on the turf should sit a perfect trip just off the other three speeds. Um, Robert Falcone, good to see him back. Great to see him back. And, you know, I'd love to see him stay. But of the few runners he's had in the last couple of days, they, they've uh, run well thus far. And, you know, we like that young blood here. And hopefully we can get – some of these horse, some of these trainers not only come for the winter, but to stay year round. I think this this horse probably just too good for this field. Um, 
The other horse that interests me is the one horse with this vow. You know, Ron Ellis is another guy who's very patient. Last time out, he ran this horse on the dirt with over a year layoff. And uh, horse ran a bang up third. This time, he draws the rail. Second time off the layoff, goes back to the turf, which is probably uh, the main play here anyways. And maybe this horse shakes loose. There is other speed, but I think from the rail, you kind of almost have to send. And uh, with the rails out at 10 feet, maybe this horse breaks and goes wire to wire. So five one for me in the third similar to the comments that i made for dream princess in race number two i'll make similar comments here in race number three for number five translate exits a productive race as well at saratoga although we haven't seen her since august of 2021 you can see the uh, winner was italicized meaning that she came back to win her next race she earned a buyer speed figure of 75 the fourth place finisher who you can't see also came back to win, earning a buyer speed figure of 82. Point being, that 68 certainly looks to be a good number for Translate. You would figure she would improve even a little bit more off the layoff and maybe a little bit more maturity. If she does, she's going to be tough to beat in race number three. Race number four begins the 20-cent rainbow pick six sequence, the jackpot single ticket carryover, now up to $121,000. That'll be yours to win today if you're the only winning ticket on today's card. And we kick things off, Jeff, going one mile on the main track for maiden claiming three-year-old fillies, $50,000 dollars is the claiming tag a field of six number one ice cold gold from the field the model barn it's two to one with the bug boy up diego herrera give us your thoughts on race four by the way you come up with these stats and i know how you you and i talked about this last sunday that you you, you can i say what you can say whatever you want there's, you use, there's no filters here you use the drf formulator i do extensively yes and um that is something i am going to add into the arsenal because as you and i we're no spring chickens and <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of uh, replays, but there are many things that I do forget. But you you write those notes down in there, and it not only adds to your handicapping and saves a lot of time, but there are many things that I will miss, and I don't have time to go back and look. Or remember. Or remember, which is <laughs> – the older I get seems to happen more and more often, but uh, that's a big advantage to have, isn't it? Yeah, an unsponsored plug, as Jeff mentioned, DRF Formulator is a tool that you all should be using as handicappers. Granted, it's expensive, but it gives you such valuable information. And I'm sure there's trials that you can use for free for a couple of days. Check that out because, again, the information that I provide to you is basically coming primarily from DRF Formulator. One of the other th reasons why I like it is I can add my paddock notes directly into the database. So anytime the horse runs next time out, my notes from the paddock are automatically in the past performances that I print off the computer. So fantastic handicapping tool, DRF Formulator. Check it out. Yeah, I I was I got to thinking, and then I remembered we had this conversation. I was like, man, you you are the sharpest man. You have the, this memory that's unbelievable. Not exactly. Gotta, yeah, because <laughs> even even a horse like last week we had spoken about, not to get off track, but real quick, that we both liked last week. Who won was Alligato, who the time before that was very washed out in the in the post Correct. parade. That was one of the few times I actually remembered something. But you had that all written down from the notes from the formulator. Very valuable, right? Because again, the horses are living, breathing animals. And obviously they change from race to race, just like humans would be as well. So any edge you can find, the long story is, any edge you can find as a handicap, we're all betting amongst ourselves. The more information you have versus your competition, the better off you're going to be. And it gets tougher and tougher to find those edges. You know, the more people have more things at their fingertips now. So anything you can, that little edge might make a difference in you making some money or making even more money in a day. Tough way to make an easy living. Let's say if we can make an easy living today, Jeff, who do you like in race four and why? All right. So my top pick is going to be the one ice cold gold for our friends uh, at Slam Dunk Racing. You know, this horse, a couple things going for it. Stretching out here. Well, actually, coming in from Gulfstream Park, first time out ran in the slop last time out on the uh synthetic so this time first time dirt um adds lasix phil d'amato dropping from maiden special weight down to maiden 50. The, the the thing that intrigued me a little bit was this horse got outworked but held his own against um a horse named mow them down who's actually running later in the card race nine in race nine for slam dunk uh, the, the Mow them down was highly regarded both times out for slam dunk racing. So I think they put this horse again, even though mow them down is dropping to 50 today. Um, I think there's some talent there. So I think this is the horse to beat on the stretch out. And uh, I think the six is going to go for uh, Tim Yachtin ice cold gold probably will send as well, but might just sit, sit just off the pace 
And uh, that's going to be my top pick here. And Jeff's top selection, number one, Ice Cold Gold, keep in mind, is also eligible for the lucrative ship and win bonus. Automatically, they get $5,000 just for putting the uh, Philly into the starting gate. And then if they win, any, if they finish anywhere between first and fifth, I should say, they get a 35% purse bonus as well if you're not taking advantage of the ship and win program, which basically is an enticement for out-of-state runners to run here in Southern California. You should be capitalizing that on that because it's extremely lucrative. Race number five, sprinting once again on the turf course, six furlongs of the distance, fillies and mares. $25,000 is the claiming tag, non-winners non of two races lifetime. Also begins the 50 cent early pick five, one scratch, scratch the one, red panty night. Leaves us with a field of five. Number three, plum sexy, also taking the blinkers off from the Ruben, Al Ruben Alvarado barn is the eight to five morning line favorite. Talk to us about race five, Jeff. All right. Obviously, plum sexy is the one to beat. And, uh, you know, Pratt shows up. You got eight to five, another slam dunk. I'm going to try to beat this horse with uh, the two sweet Madam Blue. A uh, couple things. Last time out, when this horse dropped into the non-winners of two lifetime, which is what this condition is today, uh, the horse was on the dirt. And uh, I think this horse is better on the turf. I went back and looked at the replay on November 14th from Del Mar going five panels. And this horse showed a lot of speed against a much better group. So I think there's speed to be had. This horse can take the lead. If the one sends, I think Johnny V, which is another key addition to this horse, can sit just off. And I think this horse is going to get first run on Plum Sexy. So I expect Johnny V to show much, much more speed on the two, either take them wire to wire or sit just off the one and uh, maybe add a little bit of value here in race race number five. You also like a long shot as we're looking at the graphic number five. She loves karaoke. Who's a, who's a maiden running against winners. What is it about her that you like? Well, let's face it. I didn't want to go chalk in every race and plum <laughs> sexy is probably the other one to beat, you know, a couple little angles. I figured you're going to get much more than 10 to one on this horse. Um, the horse is coming off of a long layoff previously. It had run, run off of a long layoff back in the day and uh, ran a nice fourth on the turf at Del Mar. This horse seems to run well uh, on the turf should, should come from off the pace. And I figured might pick up the pieces here at a you know 15 to 21 15 to 20 20 to 1 something like that and if plum sexy doesn't fire maybe we can get the five in the exacto or the try at a big number so I, I i can't go chalk every race and there were a couple angles that i thought were interesting so that's why i threw in she loves karaoke couple of additional comments on Jeff's top selection in race number five. Number two, Sweet Madam Blue. You can see owned by Bloom Racing. Our friend Jeff Bloom owns this filly. Of course, he also owned Midnight Bisu. So best of luck to the Bloom Racing Stable. Also, Jeff made a very good point, I thought, in his analysis of Sweet Madam Blue. You always have to be willing to ignore or draw a line through a dismal effort with a reasonable excuse. And the excuse that Jeff offered was a good one. It came on the main track. Now they go back to the turf course. So you basically have to ignore that race. And if you go too back to the race that he referred to at Del Mar back on November 14th she broke from the outside post eight out of eight in a field of eight and if you follow me anytime on twitter you know that the inside post positions at delmar won more than 50 percent of their fair share whenever they sprinted on the turf course the outside post is the outside post sprinting on the turf course at delmar were certainly at a huge disadvantage race number six begins the 50 cent late pick four mile and a 16th on the main track for starter allowance types a field of five morning lane favorite number four impossible task once again from the john sadler barn six to five on the the morning line thumbs up or thumbs down on the favorite jeff well what do i say i don't want to be a chalk eating weasel but i'm gonna to have to go with the four impossible task four to five or six to five in the morning line i didn't give you much to work with today did i <laughs> I, I, I gotta i gotta take the hand i'm dealt with so uh you know this horse is one for one at santa anita has speed but i think if somebody else goes could be tactical like we said this horse is gonna be odds on but pratt is so smart in um uh, you know, 50, 100 yards out of the gate, he he takes what's given to him. And he he sees what's happening. He's he, he's going to go on the to the front, but if somebody else sends, he doesn't just listen to the ex instructions and send. He puts them in the spot they belong, and uh, that's why he dominates out here. I mean, he gets on the best horses as well, and this horse is probably the best horse in the race. But I just love the way Flavian Pratt is always in the right spot, and you know I. Sometimes you just got to eat the three to four to five, take the odds on and move on. 
It's interesting, Jeff, you bring up Flavian and his ability. I don't remember the horse's name or even the race. You might. It was last weekend, and the race was uh, a stakes race where Johnny V was on the outside horse for Ruben Alvarado, and Flavian was on a different runner and basically was tracking Johnny V the entire way. He was a closer on a two-turn turf race, and as soon as he saw that Johnny V didn't have any horse, he made his move and basically drew off and won by open lengths. That's really the def the uh, the difference between an average jockey and a great jockey. He not only understands the pace of the race, he understands the horse to beat. He's watching that horse as well as all the other runners in the field, and when he knows that the that the favorite has nothing left, that's when he pushes the button. Yeah, I, I remember the I, I can't remember the name of the horse, but I remember the exact spot it was about the three eights pole correct, correct. he knew he, he was following exactly what he needed to follow as soon as that horse uh he knew he had nothing left he went and he and he saved ground didn't go wide he's always in the right spot there was another race last week um real quick for mike pipey who's been on kind of a roll and he had drawn the rail and this horse there wasn't a lot of speed in the race this horse does not like it was they were going a mile but this horse does not like to have dirt kicked in its face this horse is also usually a closer. I was down towards the paddock, knew what was kind of going to go on. Nobody went. Pratt actually sent to the lead. The horse ended up running second, but he saw immediately, I can take this lead. You know, how do I get from the inside to the outside without getting dirt kicked in my face? And uh, even though he got beat, he set a sensible pace, ran a good second. And it's just those little things every day that he does and that we pick up on, and that's why he's the best. He gives his mount every chance to win, that's for sure. Let's take a look at race number seven, Jeff. It's our feature race on the card. It's the Clockers Corner Stakes. Six, six furlongs on the turf course once again. For those horses that have not won a great at stakes, either in 2021 or 2022, we've got a good field of eight. Moy line favorite number three, Commander, five to two on the Moy line. But we want to watch the replay of Barraza back on January 2nd. We're going to watch the stretch run here. For Barraza from the Vladimir Sarin Barn, who has been absolutely red hot. This race was coming down the hill. Let's take a look at the replay. Race coming down the hill. This race is on the flat turf course in the Holly and David Wilson silks here. Yeah. What did you see? You could see Barraza's kind of uh, stuck behind horses here. Kent tries to go. He gets stuck right there, has to kind of wait for a second. And now, once again, he has to check. And all of a sudden, he gets out and he has about 30 strides to make a giant move. This horse explodes, and all of a sudden, he slows down here. He had plenty to win. He almost mistimed this. He was so confident, he won by a nose. But really, that horse had nowhere to go, was checked multiple times, had a quick turn of foot. And when you see one by a nose, that was the most measured nose I've ever seen and the most confident ride. This horse has won two in a row. I might love this as a, if it was a little, if this was down the hill of a little course. bit more, but a couple things, this horse has more in the tank than it showed. Obviously just had a quick burst. And I love that quick turn of foot. Vladimir Sarin is absolutely on fire right now. And I think in a tough race, this horse with another move forward, um, should be right there and it's you know it's won two out of four races at Santa Anita and I think Weston and the five Barrison the Bold should go and this horse should sit sit third or fourth and uh and mow them down late. But for Barraza to win the Clockers Corner Stakes today at San Diego, so says Jeff Chapman. Race number eight begins the $1 Golden Hour pick four. It links the last two races here at San Diego with the last two races at Golden Gate. And we kick it off going six furlongs in the main track for what appears to be a very talented field of maiden special weight three-year-olds. A field of eight, including the morning line favorite, who they paid in excess of $2 million for from the Bob Baffert Bar. Number eight, Bletchley Park, five to two on the morning line. Before we get your thoughts on the race, Jeff, we want to watch a replay from Los Alamitos back Back on December 11th for number three, Midnight Fury. As we show the replay, what did you want to point out in the last uh, attempt for Midnight Fury? Well, if you look at the start here, Midnight Fury is the five horse. And from the head on, Midnight Fury breaks here and gets absolutely pinballed at the start. The, the four and the six both come out. One comes out, one comes in. There's Midnight Fury in the white silks dead last uh, early here. The, the, the one horse who is Doppelganger, who's a vi very highly regarded Baffert horse, um, had a little bit of trouble on his own, but saves all the ground down to the inside. The five horse Midnight Fury, very wide here, um, makes a big move on the turn and uh, 
you know, I think without the trouble at the start, this horse had a chance to win this race. Maybe uh, the Baffert horse is just way too strong, but here you see Midnight Fury making a, a big wide move and now turning for home. He's about six, seven wide and uh, wears down the horse who ran second or ran third and, and gets up for the exacta. I thought this was a very productive race against a very talented horse. And I, I think the price is going to be right. This horse doesn't always train that well in the mornings, um, Midnight Fury. But as you can see here, the horse made a nice run for second. And I think it has an advantage on a couple of these highly regarded Baffert horses that it has experience. So I think we're going to get better than the four to one price. This is a very wide open race. Everybody's going to think I'm nuts because I'm picking none of the Baffert horses. And he, I think he's winning at about 47% for the meet. But I think if this horse moves forward, as you saw, it was 12 to one that day, four to one on the morning line. But I think we're going to get more than that. So I'm going to take a shot with Midnight Fury. I believe I'm yeah, Midnight Fury in the last for Doug O'Neill. Connections of Hot Rod Charlie also are a part of the ownership group of Midnight Fury and uh, including perhaps excluded, but also to be included in Jeff Chapman's analysis is also Midnight Fury is a first time Lasix user today. We close out the day in race number nine. We offer $5 Golden Hour daily double wagering, similar concept. Last race here at San Diego with the last race at Golden Gate. We're back on the turf course, one mile is the distance for maiden claiming three-year-olds, $50,000 is the claiming tag. The aforementioned number three, mow them down. First time going two turns, first time on turf is the nine to five morning line favorite. This looks to be a bit of a grab bag if you don't like mow them down, Jeff. Yeah, I'm confused about mow them down. Clearly the horse to beat. Uh, a couple things about that. I knew that they liked this horse the first couple times it ran. Showed a lot of speed, stopped. And then you might think, okay, maybe the horse bled. Now the horse is uh, first time Lasix as a three-year-old. Uh, but after two races, drops for 50, which is a little perplexing to me. Maybe they're just putting it in the right spot. You know, this horse is stretching out, going a mile on turf. Wouldn't surprise me if this horse won by three. Um, there is talent there. The horse I'm going to try to beat it with is the two Sundown Warren. Uh, once again, last time out, draw a line through that race. was intended for the turf. They, they got washed off. So we go two back to the November 28th race. And if you go back and watch that replay, um, this horse ran six with Victor Espinosa. But... Broke okay, absolutely got checked, was very, very rank, and all uh, you know, was so rank, ended up in last before the first turn and showed some run down the lane. I think this is what this horse wants to do is go long on the turf. I six, I think six to one is a fair price. Abel Sadio climbs aboard and uh first time Lasix today. They they added the blinkers last time. I think six to one will be a fair price. I think we probably will get more than that because I think the three horse will be odds on here and a couple other horses will take the six and the eight will uh, take some money as well. So I think it's worth a shot um, at, to, at six to one on sundown Warren um, who should improve today back on the turf. Jeff, thanks so much for your time and insight today. Always pleasure having you as a seminar guest. Pick up the phone. Call Jeff, 626-574-RACE. Get off the couch. Come visit us here at the Great Race Place. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Thanks so much for watching the seminar. Good luck today at the races, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem.